This is the rise and fall of Kwame Kilpatrick, part three. Hey, my Cursors, just wanted to update you and let you know uh, some of the things that we talk about on here is a little bit of truth, a little bit of lies, but it's all factual. And I also wanted to just clarify some of the things that was reported in some of the parts for the rise and fall of Kwame Kilpatrick. So the text messages were able to be released and located because they were using city official communication devices that was how they were able to locate um, all of those text messages between Kwame and Christine and others because you know he did say that he was he had other infidelities besides the two and also just to clarify I noticed that I was saying um, A&E Florida University and it's A&M um, so I just wanted to let you know that if you hear that, you know, it was a uh, a misquote for what it was. It was an A&E. It was A&M Florida University as well. Um, and some of the things keep in mind that I give to you or provide to you is based on articles um, that I've read. It's based on um, some of the videos and stuff that I was able to obtain. And then I'm also giving you the word on the curve, which is from the streets. So with that being said, let's start on part three of the rise and fall of Kwame Kilpatrick. On the last episode of the rise and fall of Kwame Kilpatrick, part two, Kwame and Christine Beatty were finally outed in regards to their infidelity of having this secret love affair between them two. And it was also very embarrassing for his wife, Carlita, to have to endure this whole situation that was brought to the public's eye. Carlita was very fed up with this whole thing and knew that he was still probably messing around with Christine. And as Kwame stated prior, he had other infidelity, infidelities besides Christine as well. So remember in the last episode, I told you guys that Carlita had hired a private investigator to follow Kwame around and bring back information to see if he was still having an affair. Well, baby, word on the curb is that Carlita got information about a secret Manugian party that was going to take place. And she was furiated with this whole thing because she knew deep down in her soul that he was going to be having some women there and he was going to be turned up and doing who knows what with who knows who. And Carlita was not finna stand for none of that. Once she got that information from the private investigator, she made sure that she blocked out all enough time, honey, to show up at this Manugian mansion party. Now pause. Because the word on the curb is the party took place, but the evidence indicates that there was no Manugian Mansion party. So according to what the documents indicate, nobody was there. There was never a, a Manugian Mansion party that took place whatsoever. Even in the documents, uh, there was no information about a secret party. Um, they were asked to interview some of the people who others claimed that was at this Manugian Mansion party, you know, questions regarding it, and they declined. They said they didn't know anything about it, that it never happened. But, baby, the word on the curb is it went down. And at the party, they said it was the life. Everybody of who knows who was there, they had strippers, they had drugs, they had liquor, everything you wanted was on deck. Well, they said that Carlita broke that party up. She walked in that door and saw the stripper named Strawberry, a.k.a. Tamara Green, was giving her husband a lap dance. And she went Hurricane Katrina on all motherfuckers that was up in this party. She said that she told everybody to get the fuck out. She was not having it. She told Strawberry, you get the fuck off of my husband right now. 
Carlita then uh, allegedly snatched up Strawberry and they started fist fighting all over that mansion. People were scattered around, running around, trying to break everybody up. Uh, most of the people were standing around just watching like what in the hell is going on. And the word on the curb is that Strawberry was getting the best of Carlita until Carlita struck Strawberry with a two by four or a table leg, something. They were saying it was something like a stick or something. And she started swinging left to right. She started beating the hell out of Strawberry ass. Now, this is the testimony of another stripper named Tamika Ruffin. She gave her testimony because she said that she was there and she was a friend of Tamara Green and saw everything that went down. She testified that she was paid $1,000 to strip at the party for Kilpatrick and his friends and that she saw the whole ass whooping go down. Tamika also stated that after the altercation, Strawberry fled the scene and stayed with her for about three weeks just to lay low and get everything calmed down. Tamika said that Carlita continued to call Strawberry's phone numerous times, threatening her to get her uh, to come and see her. Like, it's on sight, baby. When I see you, you be ready. Now, keep in mind that there were many dancers that were petitioned to speak in court. And they all said basically the same thing. They saw the whole fight. Even though Kwame and friends have denied that the party even took place, there are many who said it did and that they were there. What is even more interesting is that a while after this so-called mansion party, Strawberry was sitting in a car with her then boyfriend when someone pulled up and unloaded rounds into the car. Strawberry whose real name is Tamara Green, was murdered back in 2003 due to that drive-by shooting. Green's family believed that it was due to this Manugian secret mansion party, and a lawsuit was filed to bring justice to her murderer. Now, the word on the curb is that Kwame Kilpatrick and his roadies sabotaged the murder investigation to protect himself and his then wife, Carlita, after Green was attacked at the alleged Manugian mansion party. Keep in mind that the party has never been proven and no one has ever been charged in Strawberry's murder. Although Tamara's son and family has brought lawsuits regarding her murder, they claim that she was shot with a 40 caliber Glock gun, which was standard brand for the Detroit Police Department. Not to mention that it was rumored that three cop cars was sitting at the Manugian Mansion party the night that Carlita found, found out about the party and fought Tamara. Even with the lawsuit filed against the city of Detroit, a reward was offered for $100,000. No tips have led to the arrest and the lawsuit was dismissed for lack of evidence. But her boyfriend, Tamara's boyfriend, said that he believes enough time has passed and someone might come forward. This was back in 2018. To date, no one has come forward with any information regarding her killing. Now, during an episode of Crime Town, uh, which is on Apple Podcasts, under the murder of Tamara Green, there is a pastor that indicated that he was able to speak with Tamara uh, when all of this thing, all of the things went down between her and Carlita and the incident that occurred at the Manugian Mansion. Let's take a listen. This lady, this girl is going somewhere if she just stays on that straight and narrow course. This is Pastor Ken Hampton. Before Tamara Green was an exotic dancer known as Strawberry, he was her minister at Grace Bible Chapel. She came up in poverty. They were dirt poor. I mean, there were times when they didn't have food to eat. We had to bring them food. And the father was not there. And she swore that she would never, if she had an opportunity, live like she was raised. No one could have dreamed that things would have made the, the turns that they did. Now, as we listen to what the pastor indicated and gave us some of her early life and how she ended up becoming into the stripper business, per se, there's another section that I want you to pay close attention to. And this was the interview done with her then boyfriend at the time, Terrence. 
he goes into some detailed information of what he saw. Pay close attention. Let's listen. How did you first meet Tamara? Um, I think uh, it was like some type of uh, boys to men type of event somewhere. This is Terrace Jackson. He met Tamara Green in the late 90s. I think some guy was harassing her or something like that, and I told him to leave her alone. You know, she was obviously gorgeous. Uh, so I think I invited her to something else, and uh, over a series of months, uh, we became involved. At that time, she was just she, had, she just wanted to be a nurse, going to school to get the prerequisites in for uh, nursing and. Uh, Trying to work part time at different places and along that line to try to uh, make a better life, you know. But by that time, she had become uh, pregnant with our daughter. Tamara and Terrace had a baby girl, but they were already beginning to drift apart. They broke up, and Tamara got into a new line of work. At some point, she recognized that her assets you know visual visual assets could be a potential tool to help her out of circumstances and she progressed into you know dancing and doing other things on that line and started making a lot of money doing that and uh, she started having a taste for hanging with guys who are the street element she dated drug dealers. A lot of those guys, you know, pick her up from my place. Tamara would visit Terrace and their daughter. And after a while, he began noticing that the guys picking Tamara up had changed. I remember it stopped being drug dealers more the, towards uh, the officials or whatever like that because I could see through the tin of the car the guys had suits on You know, you start thinking about who was this guy, who was that guy. So city officials. Um, yeah. Soon enough, Tamara started dancing at high-end private parties, and she became better known as Strawberry. Now, did you pay attention to what Terrence said? And then reference back to what Tamika Ruffins said during her testimony when she was on trial. Remember she said that they were three cop cars that were sitting outside of the Manoogian mansion. And this whole thing was to just basically cover up um, the situation that occurred between Strawberry and Carlita. They wanted to calm all of this down per se, because you know, this involved the mayor of Detroit, which was Kwame. And he didn't want any ruckus during this camp, during his run as mayor, baby. Now, I ain't one to gossip and you ain't heard it from me. But the word on the curb is, is that the Detroit Police Department and those so-called city officials that Strawberry was dealing with at the time were really the ones who were behind her murder, allegedly. But that's not even the, the whole shebang of everything, you guys. But let's take a listen to this next interview that they did. And just listen closely to what is being said and how they found out some of the information. The lady in question, I was going to Medic 12, which is Jefferson Hart. I heard a call go off for Jefferson Counter. This is Michael Kearns, a retired EMS lieutenant in Detroit. He's a little hard to understand because he had a stroke a few years ago. So you arrive, there's this woman standing at a payphone? Yeah. I said, I'm Mike with Detroit EMS. Are you the person who was assaulted? He said, yeah. Kearns says he responded to a call from a gas station. A woman had been assaulted. Above her eye was swollen. She had been crying. She was physically upset. And did she tell you her name? Tammy Green. And she told us uh, 
she was dancing to the party of New Year. And uh, she got hit. Kearns is saying she told us she was dancing at a party at the Manugian, and she got hit. Said Kwame and his cronies were there. Said Kwame and his cronies were there. Did she mention the mayor's wife? Yes. What did she say? She said Carlita hit her. Kearns says he waited there until two plainclothes officers arrived with an ambulance. Do you remember the last thing she said to you? She says, thank you. I said, happy to help. And she got in the ambulance. Did you tell anybody at that time what, what had happened? I told my partners. Your partners? Um, why didn't you tell more people? I was afraid. Afraid of what? Getting hit, getting knocked off. You never know what, what could happen. Tammy would call me on occasion if she had an issue with uh, various men. And I would speak to her as a father would speak to his daughter regarding how to handle them. Again, Pastor Ken Hampton. The last couple weeks of her life, the final call, she called me and said, we need to talk. I could tell that there was trauma. There was trauma there and, and that this needed to be a face-to-face -face meeting. If it's, if it's that serious, we need to meet at a neutral place, just in case she was followed, a safe place. And so we met at a Bible bookstore, Grand River and Greenfield. And there we, we talked. And I could look in her eyes and I could discern that uh, she was afraid. She didn't really let me know other than to say that she felt that her life was in danger. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Then I stopped it right there. I said, well, your mother is out of state. You need to go right away. Even then, I didn't know how grave the situation was. One night, a few weeks later, Tamara's ex-boyfriend, Terrace, was with their daughter, Ashley. Ashley and I stopped at uh, New Waves Fish Place to pick up some uh, rice shrimp or whatever the meal was, probably about 10 o'clock at night that day. She was sleeping in my bed, turned on the news. Tamara Green finished her shift at All Stars Topless Club and hooked up with her boyfriend. Green was driving. She pulled up here right across the street from the rental property. And uh, I don't know if it was pictures of the crime scene with the car or the name, but I knew it was her. You know, it was, I didn't know what to say or do. You know, you, you don't want to believe and then, uh, you know, a lot of pain. As Green was hit, the car, still in drive, rolled across Outer Drive and came to rest in the middle of the next block. Tamara Green died at the scene. So as you can see, this information that has been obtained is a little bit sketchy. And it's unfortunate that a life was lost due to this whole situation of a so-called alleged Manugian Mansion party that took place and trying to keep it all under wraps. The family truly believes that her death was caused by this mansion party, the altercation that occurred between Tamara and Carlita Kilpatrick. They also believe that it could have involved some city officials, um, the Detroit Police Department as well. To this day, Tamara Green's murderer has not been brought forth. The pastor even noted that at the funeral for Tamara, that there were some suspicious looking individuals that showed up and that the mother of Tamara Green pointed it out. So they claimed that they had it on camera, but what happened to that footage? That's the question.
Well, the pastor indicated that he turned in the video footage to the police department. So what happened to that footage after it was turned in? Because it was not in any of the case files. It just appears that any evidence that they may have had to point out who may have been involved with her murder cannot be found. This whole thing is a little bit bittersweet for me, you guys, because... During my five minutes of fame, per se, I was in a group called the Alley Dwellers, which was put together by a guy named Alley Life Corrupt. He was a friend of mine that I had known for a lot of years that decided to give me a chance. He had his own video called That's the Way We Roll. And Tamara was cast in the video. So we all were there doing our video parts and... She was introduced to us, and she was just like one of the homegirls, just a down-home Detroit girl. She was funny. She knew how to interact with everybody, even though she didn't know us all that well. We laughed and cracked jokes and stuff. We were talking for hours as if we had already known each other. It was a blast. She was just really cool. And in between takes and stuff, we would have drinks and stuff, and we would... You know, just kick it with each other. So I was very happy to have had, you know, a chance to meet her. She had a great personality. She was just down to earth. And she got along with everybody that was on set. They was excited about Tamara being part of the crew. Um, and she didn't let all of that glitz and glamour type of thing because she was a stripper or whatever that didn't phase her she was just regular just like everybody else and she was there to do her do her job and we sat back and we laughed and we had a good time so for me personally this is just you know really super sad to even have to report about something like this but I felt like it was something that I should be able to do and shed a little bit light on this whole thing Rest in peace to Tamara Green from May 11, 1976 to April 30th, 2003. You'll always be part of the crew.